Hello everybody, it's Dave Herman, alias Daz the Artist. And now I'm going to start where I last left off. And I'm also going to focus on the art, not get political, not lose my mind talking to myself like I do in my self-quarantine times. So let's work on uh, some foliage tonight, some atmosphere, and the back wing, which is folded back on the opposite side. Uh, and we're going to get at it right now. And I'm going to play some more royalty-free music from Bensound, B-E-N-S-O-U-N-D.com, which is royalty-free music. So, uh, first we'll hit the music. This is called Little Planet. And at the same time, on another monitor, that's my laptop. So I can speak over that and control that volume separately from voice. We're playing some world music. On my other monitor, I'm watching a guy rig uh, a tent outdoors on a fallen tree because I'm totally into camping and stuff. Let me turn this sound down just a touch. And uh, let's get at it. And of course, you know, by watching these videos, you get a little taste of my personality, what I'm about. I'm the real. I live in the real. I uh, totally about cosmic experiences, cosmic lifetime. Been an artist my whole lifetime, and uh, lived really an epic lifetime that I'm happy with. So, all right, let's get down here. Let's see. I'm gonna rein this in a little bit, so I can even myself have the overview of where I'm gonna put this foliage. Let's, uh, let's do a leaf or two there. I think that will be cool. I'm going to pause for one second. Um, okay, I'm back. Now, let's get into this foliage. Let's get serious about this foliage, this plant life. Let's get me a brush and we'll get down. Let's do a See what I can get done in an hour. It is 516, so I'll be checking. All right, brushes. When you go to your uh, Pixel Persona, you're in raster. I mean, in, in uh, yeah, raster, as opposed to vector. So we're in raster, and we're going to go with uh, let's go with uh, dry media. Let's pick an interesting brush. So anytime you see something that's squarish, your brush is squarish. That's an interesting thing. So we're going to go this way, this route. I'm going to pick some color just to lay down and see how this works. So I'm going to go into my browns. And I'm just going to darken a little area um, to see how that works. Okay, good. I like it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to change the metrics. you got to take the hardness down at the top. See that? Taking it down to 3%. Taking the flow down to 15, roughly. And taking the opacity down maybe into the 70s. I'm going to try another stroke just for fun. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Interesting. Edit, undo. Let's uh, let's go large. Let's see what's cooking here. Something, either it's right or it's wrong. But I'm gonna go um, brush, and I'm going to uh, change this and drop a little under this wing. Let's see, I want this plant in front, atmospherically. I'm going to, let's just see something here. Let's just add a little to the background. Okay, so it's not picking up enough. So what I do is I will make the hardness a little stronger. Let's see what we get in this area. That's kind of 
what I'm looking for at the moment. I'm going to come around the edge of this flower, the bottom. Hmm. Not really digging that. Let's let's switch brushes. Let's go into something like this. See what we get. I want a texture. I want an airbrush kind of. There we go. So, if I do this around, say this wing. Let's uh, move this over. Let's see where we're at. And let's uh, scale this down just a skosh. And then move it over again. If I hold my button on the uh, pen, it should grab. There we go. Okay. I'm going to darken this area. I'm going to put this whole thing on here for now because I think, I think it's better. Just at the moment, I don't really need to be uh, magnified too much. So, back to brush. Okay. Going in here like this. It's interesting. And it's surrounded like by marigolds or something, really, on a, even though they look like mountains. <laughs> They're kind of marigoldish. Uh, we're gonna, gonna fix some of that up right now. So I can get down to work. I don't want to completely uh, obliterate the view, but um, what I want to do is kind of, you know, continue on this realism. But the texture, kind of like, uh, it's almost like pointillism, but it's, um, it's, just, it's an interesting blend. I'm trying to create something. I, I'm not sure if it's going to work. The feeling of the atmosphere, the, the um, you know, the light sprinkling into the air like it does, and uh, foliage, foliage, however you want to say that word and uh, just darken things but not be real specific <coughs> pardon me and uh, let's see I do want to have some stuff yeah so we're going to kind of go around like this and then thinking I don't want to have to put it behind that, but it probably would be a good idea. So, let's figure out where this background is. Let's go all the way down here. So this says background. Let's turn this off. There's color. Let's take that top row. Just the thing I just added. See the brown? I'm going to grab that, and we're going to drag that all the way down. on top of that layer. And see how that goes behind everything? So now, I'm going to pass my brush right over the bird. I want you to see this right over his sleeve. And it's going right behind it, right over the feathers. You see that? It goes right behind everything. And that way, I don't have to worry about coming up to the edge and what does filter through. You know, like say I make a vertical or I do this. Nothing is going over my beautiful artwork. It's all behind, see? So I can even look at the left side here. I'm coming down for some more contrast now. We're going to put this bird into flight. And see how that worked? Drama. Very dramatic. Because then I can sprinkle light onto things at the end of my creation. And uh, I, I see this, I've set this up now. I think it was set up for me by, uh, you know, when you get your brush, I have a, a 3D brush here, that I, a 3D digital pen 
to be exact, that I'm using with my Wacom Cintiq 24-inch Pro monitor. And I, and I have no affiliations with them. But they've been very helpful every time I had to sort out a bug or something like that, a, a real bug, a digital computer bug. <laughs> and uh, just marvelous. Okay, so I got these cool vertical lines. I don't want some of those lines in my bird's wing, even though those were created before. So I'm going to look for the bird's wing. And what I do is I go up and I hit the arrow in the upper left, and I touch that wing. And then I'm going to go through and find a layer and then turn that off. And what do we got? We're in a background there. See, that's background stuff too. So that's very powerful. And let's see what happens if we move that all the way down above the background and then above the layer we're making because it's above anyways like so turn it off that's those flowers turn this off that's the background I want it behind the flower and that's perfect and if I take a minute and look at my drawing now at uh, zoom to width the whole illustration you're just scoping it out by eye to make sure you don't have any colors overlapping your uh, crucial objects, you know. But the layer concept, the <clears throat> what they call um, non-destructive building of an illustration, is so crucial. You've seen just how I manipulated that. Now let's let's find this. Um, little bit of a wing. If I turn this off, see how that wing disappeared in the background? Because it's on a layer. You see everything else that disappeared? Like heavy dark shading. So what I'm going to do is turn that layer off. I'm studying this, the whole picture. Where did I add shading? It looked like the bottom of the lower left vest. Don't really need that. And I did stuff in the wing, and I don't know if I want that much contrast. I think like that's better. Now it's coming closer to the viewer. Because these are things you do as you evolve an illustration, and then you figure out um, if you've changed your picture, maybe you want to remove something else you did now that you're striving after something else. Okay, so right above that, we're going to add a layer in. And I'm going to tag this. <coughs> as um, rear wing. And that'll give me, again, something to locate quickly uh, when I'm drawing. So let's put in that rear wing, and it should go right over that background and be pretty sweet. And now we've got more contrast, and this whole image is coming towards the viewer. And uh, I haven't really lit everything up from a direction of light from the left uh, and drawn in all the leaves, but I will. So first I'm going to put that wing in. I'm going to try uh, a texture and I'm going to try uh, some color. So let's go with a, just a little blue here for a second. This kind of a kind of a nice turquoisey blue. Let's get into the pen, my brush I mean. And let's just throw some of that in the background there where that wing is. See. So now you can see where that wing is. And we're going to go to um, acrylics. Pick a brush. I'm going to try throwing it in with that. There we go. And that's even better. And assuming that is a sleeve, too, from far away. We've got like a top ridge and we've got like a hanging down area. And we want to use some colors to make it look a little more distant. So we're going to go into maybe a deeper shade of blue. Put that down above the top of the closest wing. Like that. And then maybe darker.
that's looking pretty cool. So I'm going to add a touch of purple as I see this. Just a little bit here and there. It's still distant, you can tell that. And then I'm, I'm going to kind of, you know, eventually there'll be light on that side. So say like if I did a little bit just in the front of the wing there, you can see that. Kind of off to the side of the hat. There might be some, some light on the edge of the wing in the distance like that little loopy stuff, little, little bit flex, little bend. That's good. And then maybe some of that on the foreground of this one. And so um, I'm going to say, first of all, boy, I forget to do that. And then I'm going to go uh, find this wing. So if I, if I go up to the arrow, and I tap my wing, and then I move the sidebar up and down to find the layer. There's the layer. Turn off the layer. You can see it was that front wing. Go back to that layer, and it's on there that I'm going to add some highlight. I'm going to go into my brush and add a little bit of light there, just on the top tip. And that you know, it gives me some separation and shows the other wing. And uh, it's kind of a mental reminder to me. Let's make this a little pointier up here, this garment. Kind of like the look of that. Like that. And then, you know, an edge beyond the interior. So like that. And then erase just a skosh on the inside. So you can do that. Anytime you wish you didn't like it, a line and you're on layers, you have the option to erase on the layer you're working and it won't affect anything underneath it. See, so like if I start to, to, to build this out, and by building it out, it's just I'm bringing it forward to the viewer. And um, you know, super cool, super cool. And there will be some light shimmering on the garment itself, you know, that would maybe the interior of that wing is pressing this an edge, say, like right around here, like that. And then even passing over the staff, like that, makes it very interesting. Say that. All right, so now we created like a second wing that I'll reference. Um, I may have something coming out of that wing too that, it, that the king is holding. So right now with his feet underneath the vest, it's holding a bar of gold on the left and a teapot on the right of nectar. You know, hummingbirds like nectar. It's got a magic wand that it... Uh, does whatever it does with that, probably pollinates plants and gives wishes, grants wishes to other hummingbirds in his realm. And uh, I'm trying to think of what I would have far away on that other wing that he might be holding. Because this is a whole new concept. He's got legs that hold and now wings that are holding. And uh, Totally, totally coolness. This would be a great Disney movie, the, the Hummingbird King uh, Shaman. So let's see. Uh, so he's got a wand that gently pollinates plants. He's got his honey nectar. He's got his uh, sugar nectars. He's got his gold bar. What else would he need? Maybe a tiny shield to reflect the sun? We'll think about that. Okay, let's get back into the plant foliage. And uh, we'll pick another song. So to pick another song, uh, I just hit my reload the page bar up at the bar of a browser. Reload my same page 
But then when I play songs from Ben Sound, there's no commercial in it. This is called relaxing. I give them a shout out. I have no affiliation with them, but they like you to give them a shout out, it says, if you use this stuff for free. And what could be easier than to give a shout out? So I do. All right, back down to the bottom where all our backgrounds are. And uh, I think I think I'm gonna try, let me turn this off, see if I'm on the right layer. Yeah, I'm gonna work up the leave on the left. And let's put some shadows in quickly and then get into some color, see? So under his wings on the left. You've watched enough of me now so I can work faster. Oh! Edit, undo that, whatever happened. Uh, Mr. Hand. Bring that over. Thank you. Okay. Sometimes I do things that I didn't mean to do. I hit a button or, yeah, I, I hit the hand button on the, uh, on my digital pencil, pen, you know, the digital pen. If I hit the, there's two buttons on the 3D pen. Never set them up. <laughs> I never set up all these tools even though I own them because what happens is I forget what they do anyways. It's part of my artist's brain. So I just like to start like I was born fresh every time. It's terrible. It's maddening to have the artist's brain, let me tell you. All right. Working down. Changing the shape and diameter of the brush with my left hand using my express key remote. And you can see that diameter change. And I'm working the brush, of course, with my right hand because I'm a righty. But you can obviously do it with the left hand if you're a lefty. It's easy enough to set these things up for either hand. And uh, they work perfect. It's no problem. Uh, file save. Keep my fingers away from touching all these buttons. Nice music playing there. It's kind of uh, not intimidating. It's quiet. I try and pick music like uh, that doesn't really have a lyric so that they're not fighting with me speaking and they don't take concentration away when I'm talking about art and uh, all that good stuff. See, now look, I can go right over the feather. Watch me just pass a stroke over the feather. See, it's behind it. So oh, that just gave me an idea. This is how my brain works, sorry. I'm now going to make a very cool arch. Whoosh, look at that. And I'm keeping the striations in it. Oh man, sometimes you gotta do that like a thousand times to get the, 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 the look you want. But now I have a rainbow. I just got the greatest idea. Oh, I love it sometimes. So uh, yellow and blue make green. Right? So you want to have, you got your yellowish, you got to have your greenish next to that. Um, let's make it a little more muted. So kind of a dirty green. And see if I can fit that in there. Okay. Just widen it a little at the top. This is all freehand, you know, so no templates, no tricks. File save. And then blue and uh, you know you got RGB so you got um, 
that your colors in the digital world and then in your colors in the uh, the analog world are going to be uh, yellow, red, blue as your primaries. And then your secondaries are orange, green, and purple. And then in between those are your tertiaries where you make, you know, dirty variations of those colors. So let's go to uh, jazz. Let's hit our reload this page. It's that circle with the arrow at the top of the browser. And let's pick a long jazz jam to play in the background called uh, Love, in this case. This is Ben's sound. It's free. It's got no affiliation with them at ever. But I'm giving them a shout out because they give me free music. Even if they don't know it. Okay, there's my... Oh, that's pretty good. And so see where it overlapped the, the pedal? I'm going to take my eraser and just erase instead of putting pigment down. But look what it did. It's on the same layer. Faux pas. Edit, undo. So what do you do when that happens? First of all, you remember you should be on another layer, which I should have been. So I have to finish the rainbow on this layer, or I can undo all that and start over. Uh, and I would if it was commissioned work. I'm going to draw over that. Let me see something. Just throw down a little pigment. Oh, I'm in the white still. Uh, edit, undo, edit, undo. Which is good. It takes you down to the paper. So let's say we want that out of there. We would just whiten it out uh, completely. Like I'm taking pigment off paper. And then if I put yellow in with my brush, it's clean like the first first time it ever was in there without the dirty uh, blue swatch under it. See? Follow me? So if you're on a layer that you didn't mean to be on, and you drew over something and you didn't want it, uh, and you didn't say you're into it for 20 minutes, you know, you certainly aren't going to reverse everything. So you would just do what I showed you. You can paint it off, come down to your paper, whatever layer is under it, and then put it in fresh. See, so like you never saw it before. It's perfect. Perfect. Everything's behind. Now, uh, that purple, it, it, it should be more blue. So we're going to uh, edit, and um, we're going to put some blue over that just to make it interesting, more interesting color. Let's see if it shows up right. There we go. Still showing up that way because it's going over other colors. I want a little cleaner blue. So let's let's rotate till we get a really strong blue right there. Move it to the edge and then come down with that. Go back to my green, hit the green. Nope, I don't want that. So I'm pressing too hard. I'm just going to press a little lighter. There we go. Introducing a little green, just in, like that. Just a little variance. I don't want it to look flat. Same thing with the yellow. I'm going to come back in with a little stronger yellow. I'm going to start at the petal. I'm going to come up. Just a little variance of stroke over the wing, over the beak, which I can erase. Let the beak show, which would be cool. So I'm going to come over the beak and just, uh, oh, you can't do that. Uh -uh. Interesting. Well, we'll see if I like that. It could be over the beak. I can draw over it too. Hmm. Yeah. Let me zoom in there and draw over that. Let's just see if we like that. So things I'm watching all the time. Now that does have a little atmosphere there. It is kind of looking cool. But I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put some black in there. Black yellow. Just a smidge to kind of be 
in and out of that rainbow. Now I'll save that. Actually, I put a tip of white on there. Let's just, just put a glint, a glint as they call it. Glint. Huh. Let's go up one layer for a second. Try that glint. Go up one more layer. That glint's going to be on all these layers to get the, the good glint. And I'm going to skip all the way up to the top. What on earth? There we go. Up to the top. And I'm going to hit the glint. And I'm going to go back down to the bottom. There it is. Just a skosh. Just a just a smidgen. Smidgen glint. Yeah. File save. And then view to width. Yeah, see like that. So kind of the rainbow. You can't tell if his beak is in the rainbow or out of the rainbow. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, this is so handsome. Okay. Now give me an idea too for the rainbow wand that's it the rainbow wand that will be coming out of its other hand painting the rainbow oh it's gonna be a long wand this is interesting okay so let's let's go pick another jam this is what slows me down currently in my videos because I can't find an album but uh, let's try the elevator bossa nova. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a new layer. Uh, let's go back down to the bottom. I love all these layers. It's maddening. And we hit the bottom one and put a layer just above that. And we're going to put the wand of rainbows in there. Let's see. So let's start with the brown. And going to project from its wing. So if the wing was turned back, but let's see, how would I do that? Hmm. Yeah, his hands would be back, but he's got this big long scepter. Let's try it. Let's just try it. We'll put the scepter. Um, let's see. Go here, see the brown by his far wing? Let's see if I can pass that right straight across without going over his head, see that? From side to side, it's in the background. Comes to the rainbow, like that. Okay, and there's the scepter. Now I'm going to uh, thin that out with the eraser and give it a taper like that, like a ski pole or something, you know, a spear, a pool cue, anything, anything, give me a pool cue, okay, okay, a black magic marker, <laughs> see who can figure out that reference, a black magic marker, give me a black magic marker, I'm not going to tell you what it is, see if you can figure that out. All right, let's get some black in here and go back up oh, and undo. You know what? I got to get out of the eraser. Sorry about that. There we go. Gently get this scepter in the distance. So I can go right across the wing to have the continuity of the, the length and the width. And then come across here in front on the the wand of rainbows. The rainbow wand. Oh, that line went off. Let's edit and undo that. It's going to have a little twist to it. Not, not super straight because it reminds you of the bird. You know, if it has a little, in fact, a twig, a little bit of bark. 
Oh man, I love when my brain gets in the gear. Today could be a good session. What about that? <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's let's have a branch out here. And uh, say another branch here. Because he's just magic. Maybe a knot here. See, I can draw right through the bird's head because it's in the background. It's the power of layers. Remember, remember what I'm showing you. It's the power. You have the power. A black magic marker. Just give me a black magic marker. <laughs> Who knows what movie that's from? All right, now, go back to the background of the leaves. I put a little yellow in there. Kind of mix it up where the stick's going through. And then I go up one layer where the stick is, and then up one layer above the stick. And see that? See how it goes into the rainbow now? That last stroke went off the curve. I don't like that. There you go. Paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay, that looks cool. Let's just gently waft this up. Let's see here. Uh, let's pick another cut. The phone was ringing. Uh, when the TARDIS brain. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. All right, let's see. <coughs> Recycle the music page. This is working so good. Let's try corporate and pop. How would you put corporate pop together? Must be elevator music, but uh, we'll give it a whirl. There's one here called... Sweep apparently is the longest in that genre. Let's go. <coughs> okay, back to the rainbow. Where was the rainbow? I think it was this layer. So how do we find out? We turn it off. That was the stick. I'm going to put a little note there. Rainbow wand. Just to save myself some trouble. Next layer. Turn it off. That's a whole background and a rainbow. Turn that off. Hmm. I guess the rainbow's on the very bottom one. Yeah. All right. All good. We're going to go back to that layer. So it's behind things. And uh, yellow and blue made green. Blue and red make purple. So you're gonna go purple next. Uh, let's do a little purple. See that? Sweet. And keeping the width down. Oh, this is so cool. Got the right elevator music going, everything. <laughs> So blue, purple, red, we want red, and then, of course, orange. And then it, um, I might have something else. So let's see, get some, some red. Yeah, my 
go to the ultra white beam. But see, that's cool. I don't know, this just seems to. So perfect. Perfect! Let's get some purple again and go over that red just in the center. A little ultraviolet like. Okay. And then orange. Let's see, I make my red wider. I think so. Okay, and then I'm gonna go orange. I kind of like the graininess over the other the background it's it's doing. I'm kind of losing the roundness of it. There we go. And I'll put some red back in. Just enough to make it work. A touch of purple at the bottom. And some of the rainbow is on that leaf in the front. But you see, because the bird's in front of the leaf and the rainbow is in front of the leaf, it's too confusing. So you go to the eraser, which is going to be a nightmare, <laughs> and take that out kind of come around that whole edge. Now I'll put the yellow back in. Let's go yellow, let's go brush. There we go. Just kind of work it in, leave a little bit of the sprinkle of the white, because then you have like atmosphere. You know, it's like the air sprinkled in there. And then we're going to do like a white almost on the outer edge of the rainbow there. Just, uh, why not just the sky, morning sky or something. Even behind the plant there on the far right. Now does that look too wonky? Let's go with... Uh, a deep brown out there, like a burnt sienna, almost. Let's see what's happening out there. Everything looks kind of cool, except we're having this uh, dilemma of uh, the prism effect. I kind of get uh, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple, red and yellow make orange, orange and yellow. Uh, I think there's an ultraviolet too. Let's put the ultraviolet, which is a very, like a ultraviolet like that. So bingo bong to that one in there. That's what I need, a little bingo bong. Some ultraviolets and things going on there. And then I can even go over that. Now, what's happening with the stick, you see, the stick almost looks like it's against, um, looks like it's a shadow from something. It's very strange. Um, it's got potential. We haven't put any glows on it. Let's go over that stick. Where do I have rainbow one there? I'm going to uh, go one above rainbow one. And I'm going to put some lights on my staff, my stick his uh, rainbow stick. Let's do a little something on the edge of this one. This little branch and one up here. And one inside. So first I'm going over the top. drew my shape and now I'm, I got a big diameter and I wiggle it. Just like that it kind of 
fills in the outside. You can go bigger and wiggle like that, see, and it kind of just gives it direction. Uh, uh, something's happening in there. Well, that's looking cool. And I think we're going to save this frame. This is a frame worthy of saving. And then, uh, let's see here. Let's go um, JPEG, hit it, hit it, slice nine. Back to the drawing page. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna send that to somebody. I'll be right back. Uh, Alright, back at it. Let's see. You know, these are unedited. I just stop and pause them and then I come back. And <laughs> hey, uh, I gotta deal with life like everybody. Okay, let me uh, recycle some music. For sure, this. The way I'm doing this music, uh, there's no problem with it. The other particular site I found somehow is crafty. And even if you use the free stuff, they tell you, hey, hey, don't do that. <laughs> so I can never tell what the agenda is of all these things. I know my agenda is just to share, but I don't make a dime doing this. All right, rainbow wand. Let's get back to that and put a few more lights in the picture. Um, let's see, rainbow wand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, above that. That's where I have my lights. I might do a couple of different color ones. So we'll go to brush. We're on the proper layer, and we'll brush in a little. Twinkle stuff. It's a twinkle stuff. Have a little specials. A little special. What's happening? The magic. The magic. A black magic marker. Give me a black magic marker. I'm going to say that so you can figure out what movie that's from. <laughs> it's a great scene, by the way. It's got nothing to do with this, but other than the fact that they're drawing on somebody. energy black button in the middle of one of them. Don't forget the dark energy is everywhere. And now how do we make this look uh, more 3D? Well we can put some uh, plant life in the bloom behind or whatever. I'm not sure. I might even have some rays off my bird. Let me uh, see if this is not too funky. We'll go up one layer. And let's make a little glow from the red vest. So that would be behind the bird, right? I can draw, see it's not going over the vest, like that. Just uh, wafty, wafty, softy, softy, spread it out a little, and then can have the beams either coming from the bird or coming in from the picture. Let's go with nature coming from the upper left. And we're going to go one more layer in case I don't like this. I can take it and turn it right off. Oh man, I moved the whole picture over. What the heck? Hit the button or something? I don't know. Let's see. Hey, draggy, draggy. There we go. 
Come back to here. Two of those or three? I think it's three normally. So if you forget, you go to view, you go to studio, you go down from studio to um, reset studio, and you hit that, and boom, that's how it's out of the can. If you think four across on the left there is too much, you just move that over a notch like this, and that's cool. Gives you a little more space in your viewing window. Now, if you hit the tab key, just like in Photoshop, the interface should disappear. Let me see about that. Uh, yeah, tab key. No, that's the, uh, yeah, right, tab key. Uh-huh. And that's kind of cool, you know, if you want to expand it, fill up this whole screen and work, but then you can't see your tools. I never, you know, I don't know. It's good to blow it up and look at it, look for errors. Okay. We've got things happening. We're thinking about this. The music's playing. It's developing nice. Um, i got to extend the feathers out in the back one a little bit, so let's do that. We'll go up a... A layer above this, and I'm just going to rough in with some white, just the shape of the feather, because you see how far it sticks out of his sleeve here, the close one? Well, i got to have some feathers sticking out there that are holding that wand, right, in perspective. So I'll, I'll say I'll go out about that far, just eyeballing it, like that, see, and then like that, see like that and uh, then we shape it because you're at the ends so kind of like that like that like that it's kind of ethereal and then I can just branch it down at the very bottom where it meets looks like it's getting a little wider to the viewer and then uh, let's, let's go with some purple and scuzzy it up a little so, like that, a little bit further away, some blue, I just play with it because they're iridescent wings, right? We're making them iridescent, almost like a dragonfly, and magical. Here and not there and there and here and there and there and not there and here and not there. Like that. And then come back into it. And so it's the fun of uh, messing with Sasquatch, so to speak. Like that. Then, let's go to the brown. And define some boundaries of that wing just a little bit. So kind of like that, the bottom layer shadow, like that, kind of way out like that, there, clean, 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 and maybe a little darker at the sleeve, just a little, a little bit of purple in there, let's go with the deeper shade. Uh, like the mauve or something down where it is. Goes into the sleeve, kind of work that out. Make that a save. And come down like that. Let's see. Kind of shaping. Now it's a little bit wide where it hits the sleeve, right? So I can get my eraser, kind of taper that and shape that wing a little bit, give it an arch almost, pull it down just a little bit more like that. And maybe shape the ends like that. And maybe erase so that the staff comes through it like that. We like that. It's 
possibility. Let's uh, edit, undo, and erase a little less force. Okay, like that. Hmm. Yeah. And then above it, just smooth. And below, just smooth. So it's just showing it right, 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 right. File save. Sometimes I forget I'm in Erase, and then I remember, after I make my drawing disappear, I come back and tweak this a little. It's all good. It's kind of a perplexing way I'm, I'm doing these things. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, maybe a little bit darker around the wing itself. Just sometimes you'd have a light glow. I'm going to show the background is darker behind it, faded away. See how that works for us. That. Maybe even some things, some stocky things. Remind you of plants. Like that. Yep, yeah, it's a possibility in the bloom. Fence, maybe off in the distance. Could be a fence. Yeah. Let's save that. It's looking pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Little by little. Little by little. And now, uh, maybe a twinkle on the edge of that wing. Like that. And a twinkle on this wing. Something mysterious. Yeah. A little heavy on that stroke, so let's undo that last stroke. That's looking good, these orby kind of things. Do jet pilots see these when they're at 80,000 feet in the air? Hummingbird shamans? I don't know. Say, give me a black magic marker. Okay, let's have a shadow on the wing. Just a touch of shadow for lift. Can we do that? And then brighten the staff just a fuzz. So it's in front, that worked very well. And then maybe even brighter at the tip, top. And then even brighter, let's go with yellow. Let's get into the chrome yellow area. Ooh, like that. Not too much, not too much. And then a, a white. And it's starting to work, see. Like that. Very subtle, so there we go. Now I've got some lift, you see that? Dimension, dimension, my way. Trying to keep things delicate, soft, atmospheric, 
have a sense of gravity, have a sense of, of uh, intelligence in the bird, you know, the eye and the posture of the mouth and everything tells you the tilt of the head. Everything is just conveying its thinking inside, staring back at you. And we're putting things in space, time and space, and still trying to keep that ethereal magic aspect about this, where things are mm, idyllic and fantasy-like without being so harsh. So underneath the front stick, I'm putting a shadow, the front wand up there. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to put some shadow right where it meets the bird. Beak there under the bird. Just a darker the bottom. Like that. Push it back a fuzz. I'll do that behind the head. Just a little. Like that. Uh, I might even come and make it wider down there. Like a little, little bit wider. There we go. And then a touch of white on top of that in front of the wing, just a smidgen, like so. And run that down the top in different places. Um, on my illustration of the, of the staff. Don't wanna just a little here and there. The last one's too bright. Let's take that out. Okay, so like that. Can't have a ton of detail, you know. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to add a real dark brown, I'm thinking, between the two wings there, atmosphere wise. So let's go over there. Let's kind of put that in. I'll leave that orb a little wispy. And then even more black in there, like that. Give that wing just a little bit more lift against the background. You know, art, um, a lot of times we, we falsify things <laughs> to create the look, you know? I mean, it's, who knows? The human eye would never see this so fast. It would just be going <laughs> You know what I mean? And there would be a guy going, a black magic marker. Give me a black magic marker. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> there we go. That's pretty cool. File save. So there are things pushing back the background, bringing the bird to the front. The bird looks a tad flat on the vest. And uh, I... I'm thinking about that, okay? I'm thinking the lead edge of the vest at the bottom, I'm gonna put a little light on there. Again, this is fantasy, so it doesn't have to be the way it looks in the real world. It has to be a captivating visually to me, you know? Uh, and so to do that, we gotta find the vest. And to find the vest, we got to go to the arrow, and we hit the vest. And then you look through your layers on the right. Turn off the thing. Is that the vest? Yeah. Okay. Go back to brush. This is how I work complicated pieces, you know. And, um, you know, the there's no machine drawing this for me. I'm drawing it. I'm thinking it out the way I want. I'll put a little light. In the front of that vest, see, just on that turn and at the bottom turn. And then I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go back and view it at actual, or zoom to width. And even that, just give it enough of a lift. You could be more shadows and stuff. We'll, we'll do that. We'll get into that. That's the subtle stuff. So that's that's pretty commanding there. Well, sometimes you just gotta think. Do I want the glow 
to be super hot on the end of that staff. So let me go down to where I have Rainbow One, click that layer, and let's just take and put a white light at the very end of that. So I'm going to go, let's go into that really bright. See that? Like it's it's pushing through now. Now I can make that brighter right at the very tip, coming out of the rainbow. Ever so slight. Still leaving it transparent. But that looks cool. Like it broke through. And to make it look like it's breaking through more, we're going to lay some color on top of that. So we'll put a layer above that one. I don't care how many layers there are, it doesn't mean anything to me. It'd be a thousand. You can always find where you are. The point of layers is to be non-destructive, so you can you can edit your material, you know. I want to edit this, see. Get some brighter like that, wider like that. That little sphere is popping out like that. Do I want that? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Maybe a deeper purple in there on top of that atmosphere. It's going to have some of these like that. Then the green again. Not so bright. Like that. Yeah. Widen it up at the top a little. File save. Now, even the rainbow could have, it could be a little bit of a shadow. I know this is, does, may not happen in reality, but I'm going to put a little shadow under the glow onto the rainbow. Just a little separation shadow. See like that? Now that's a little heavy. But that's the idea. So I'm going to put a little, just a little bit of a certain areas like that. See, not too much. Not too much. The bust through the point. Maybe some lower down here. Just enough to, it's not really, if I drag it out, so it's not really like a shadow, and it still has the contrast. So let's, let's uh, view it um, actually at 100%. So there you go. Now you can see as a six by nine, the dramatic nature of this artwork. <laughs> I'm so loving it. And that orb, uh, the wing is in front of the orb and the closest one, and I could put some white over the tip of that, but, you know, there's something cool about all this. I like it. I like it. I like it. File save. Oof. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Let's see how many minutes we're into this, because I'm just going to do an hour, because it takes so long to process these videos. That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Bye-bye.